Okay. So I, I really wanted to, to give this laptop like an A plus. I just, I wanted this laptop to be the best thing for pros, the, the killer video editing laptop that we all had hoped for, but I just, it's driving me crazy that going from M1 Pro to M2 Pro has done literally nothing. It is a nominal increase in performance for video editing. Now let's talk about where it is an increase in performance and let's talk about the actual price you will have to pay as a pro if you want to get the laptop that's best for your needs. Now, first and foremost, if you're a creator working in the domain as a photographer, graphic designer, or digital artist, then let me tell you, don't spend any more than the 13 inch M2. And here's the reason why. As we go from the M1 Pro to the M2, we're going to see very similar performance. Now, the M1 Pro in 2021 scored a 709 in Photoshop, and that is plenty of performance. And that was even when we were running Rosetta Emulation, right? So we're running the program through an emulation that goes and doesn't run directly on Apple Silicon. Since then, Adobe has released a full Apple Silicon version of their software for users like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Illustrator. So immediately we're gonna have better performance than 709. Now, when we go from M1 Pro to M2 Pro, we see a 50% increase in performance. But a lot of that has to do with Adobe rolling out a full scale Apple Silicon version of their software. So that 50% increase in performance is partially Apple, but partially Adobe, which is why I think you'll be perfectly suited for either even the M1 Pro from a few years before or this M2 13 inch for $1,200. I do not think that you need to go ahead and get the M2 Pro. If you're a creative professional working in either Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, Sketch, uh, Figma, the like, this to me is a little bit overkill. This is extreme overkill. This is absurd overkill. Now, if you want a 16 inch screen, you'd have to go with, you know, a larger, more expensive laptop. However, let me give you an option as a pro. Here's what I would do. I would go to somewhere like either, you know, max pre-owned site, or I would go to bestbuy.com and I would get an open box special for last year's M1 Pro. If you're a graphic designer looking for a 16 inch model, this is what I would do. For 1655, you can get a 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you want more hard drive, instead of getting 512, you want one terabyte, I would go ahead and get that for 1898. That's going to save you about six to $700 on your purchase. That would be my proclamation and recommendation to you as a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer. Okay. Now let's move towards the video editor. This is where I became very frustrated going from M1 pro and M1 max to M2 pro. We only saw a decrease in performance of two seconds on a 4K export time, put a nine minute clip into Premiere Pro, export it out at 4K full quality settings. It took two seconds longer going from M1 Pro to M2 Pro. Very disappointing. As a comparison, you can get a Windows laptop something like the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, and you can export that same clip in three minutes and nine seconds, even on battery power. Okay, so this whole argument of Windows laptops are great when they're plugged into the wall, but they suck on battery power, and that's the advantage of Apple. Let me tell you, it is a partial advantage, and Windows is really catching up. Now, I know this is an apples to apples video, but I just wanted to put that out there because the value proposition between these two camps is becoming closer and closer as we're seeing developments in both Ryzen and Intel as well. Now, I know you're here for the Apple MacBook Pro laptops, but... Lenovo sent over three Legion 5 Pros for us to give away when we pass 100,000 subscribers. So if you're curious about how you can win one of these, definitely subscribe and ring the bell. And when we pass 100,000 subscribers, we launch a full video about the giveaway. Now let's move on to 6K video editing. So with 6K video editing, this is where I had even bigger problems with the launch of M2 Pro, hoping that we would have vast increases in performance when Apple's running their keynote saying eight streams of 8K video editing 
little little asterisks in Final Cut Pro, which by the way, I ran a poll on my channel and most of you aren't using Final Cut. Most of you are using Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve at nauseum. Okay, so what does it look like to buy a pro laptop for 6K video editors? We're gonna get to that in just a second. I think if you're a 4K video editor, you would be perfectly suited with last year's M1 Pro or M1 Max. You're gonna save money, get a refurbished or open box from either Apple or Best Buy and save yourself a few hundred dollars. You could even maybe get more storage in your laptop by going with last year's model or getting a refurbished model. We've seen some prices, they look great. That would be my recommendation because the delta between the performance increase and the price, are, are it's missing, it's not connected. So that is where I would go for the initial launch of M1 Pro or M1 Max, and I would avoid this M2 Pro or M2 Max. The increase in performance was not enough for me to justify it. Okay, let's talk about how to actually get the laptop performance you need for 6K video editing. When I ran the test for 6K video editing on the M2 Pro, we now see zero drop frames. Now this was an improvement from last year with the roughly 1800 drop frames we saw with M1 Pro. So that was an improvement. Clean, smooth video playback inside of Premiere Pro. However, the issue that I ran into is when I went to export that footage. When I tried to export 6K footage to 6K, this is a standard export test I do. I go into Premiere Pro, I load a 6K nine minute clip, I go and I click match source during the export settings and I export that clip. On average for your de facto gaming laptop from Windows, this takes anywhere from about 20 minutes to about 12 minutes. Okay, from the worst to the best. And the worst is actually like a Ryzen 5 5600H and RTX 3050 Ti. It's like a 1100 or less dollar laptop. So I've even seen them for like $900. So very budget friendly laptop doing it in 20 minutes. It takes the M2 Pro over 59 minutes to export that same clip, 6K to 6K. So I thought, okay, that's not even doable. If I handed this laptop to my editor and said, you need to edit 6K on this, She'd be waiting around a long time every time she edited footage on the laptop. So I said, okay, let's change it up. Let's go 6K to 4K. All right, the laptop must be able to do that. It did in about 25 minutes. So it takes longer to export the clip than a Windows laptop, and it doesn't even export at the full resolution that we needed. All right, so that means that this laptop is underperforming at the base model. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to go to apple.com and we need to upgrade the laptop because the base model will not be suitable for my needs or if you're a 6K video editor. I'm shooting Blackmagic 6K camera. It's about six gigs per minute to shoot Blackmagic RAW 12 to one on this camera, which is actually much less than a RED camera. So if you're shooting RED footage, you need a heck of a lot more. Okay. So with that in mind, we need not only high performance, but we need storage. So looking at the base model for the MacBook Pro 14 inch, that won't work. We just proved that out. It took an hour to export 6K footage. The mid-tier model, I don't think that would work either. We're gonna be at maybe what? 45 minutes with a few extra cores. So I think you need to be going with the M2 Max if you're a professional 6K video editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. So right there, we're at $3,099. From there, I'd recommend spending the extra $200 since you'll probably have this laptop for anywhere from five to seven years and go ahead and upgrade to 38 core GPU. And you know, the 64 gigs of unified RAM will help speed up your timeline because you're not just putting one singular 6K clip on your timeline. I'm not, I'm putting multiple 6K clips on my timeline and motion graphics and color grading. So I think the 64 gigs of RAM would be very, very essential to somebody who's doing complex 6K video editing. From there, you know, as well as I do, that these 6K and beyond files are massive. If I shoot one of my 20 to 30 minute videos, it's gonna be anywhere from 60 to 80 gigs at minimum for one of my cameras. So that means I will be blowing through one terabyte of storage in no time. So you wanna upgrade to two terabytes of storage in my opinion. All right, so that puts you at $4,099 on the conservative side. All right, now let's say you went ahead and wanted a larger screen. You went for the 16 inch model. It would cost you $4,299. So only an extra $200 for the larger screen, which is a really nice bump in your workflow. So honestly, if it were me and you're gonna be forking out the cash, 
I'd go for the 16 inch model because it's still on the go friendly, but it's a bigger screen and creates a better workflow experience. So to me, this is the real price of what it costs to get into a MacBook Pro if you're a pro shooting 6K video or beyond. Now I've created a bunch of other videos, so click or tap the screen here. There's a lot to cover on these new MacBook Pros and I've broke it up into individual videos just to capture my thoughts in a unified way. I'll see you over on one of those videos.